Welcome to Book Club Preview. I'm Michael, and today we're looking at The Graveyard Book, Chapter 2, A New Friend. So, this chapter starts off with Bod, um, which is nobody. After like three years, uh, I think they say they're five, um, I guess. So, maybe four years, something like that. Now, after a few years, okay, for sure. And Bod is growing up, he's walking, he's asking questions, he's independent. He's a pretty obedient, clear-headed child. Um, but he wants more. Why can't I leave the graveyard? Because it's not safe. Why isn't it safe? Because people want to hurt you. Why do they want to hurt me? That's another story to tell you later. Um, but he's just kind of locked within this graveyard. He can't really leave. But he explores everywhere he can. And at one point in time, he starts learning letters, A, B, C, D. And he starts writing and copying these letters down to practice them. One day, as he's copying and writing his letters, a little girl comes up to him and says, Hey, what are you doing? And he looks at her and goes, mm. And then she looks at him and goes like, mm. And he says, Whoa, that's a really good face. And she says, Oh, yeah, I can do even better ones. And she's like, mm and makes even funnier faces and then she asks um, bod what he's doing and how old he is and what's his name and there's all sorts of things going on in there but eventually they start playing together and they start having fun and um scarlet ends up leaving with her family and coming back and playing and and just you know just having fun and exploring and sometimes um bod would introduce her to ghosts and she couldn't really hear them or see them or anything and he would um, reply what they were saying to her when Scarlett tells her mom and dad about oh I was up in the in the hill playing with a boy his name is nobody and he does this and this and this and her parents were thinking hmm this must be an imaginary friend and uh, so they even like set out a plate for Scarlett's imaginary friend nobody and then she'd go back to the hill and play with her friend. And one day, um, Scarlet was trying to explain to Bod what um, what his, what her parents do. It's like, oh, my dad studies particle physics, and he looks at things that are smaller than atoms. And Bod is listening, and he kind of decides, hmm, I think maybe your dad likes to study imaginary things. And so uh, I just love this really clever way that Neil Gaiman uh, flips the imagination. From the parent's side, the daughter's imagining things, but it's real. On the cult children's side, the parents are playing with imaginary things, but those are real. <laughs> and it's just different perspective. So they're off playing, and then one day Scarlett says, Hey, who is the oldest person here in the cemetery? And Bod says, um, I don't know, I think this Roman guy. I can't remember his name. And she says, okay, is there no one older than that? Because I thought there were people older than here. And it's like, oh, I don't know. And she says, oh, let me go, pl let's go play in that building. I want to make um, little houses in there. And Bob says, oh, we, you can't go in there because it's locked. And they start getting a fight and she runs away. So while she's with her home, with her parents, she's like, who are the oldest people in England? Like before the Romans. And they start to talk about another group that lived there in England. And then Bod goes around the graveyard and says, well, who's the oldest person that lives here? And he asked the Roman guy, and the Roman guy says, well, there is one older than me. And Bod's like, whoa, okay, tell me more. And the, uh, the Roman guy starts telling a story about, um, he, he didn't even know about this other um, dead person, although he felt that person there. But when they were building like a little chapel, there oh no back up there was a rock covering a hole then a farmer or something found it like 300 years ago moved it over went down thinking there was treasure he saw something ah! ran out and screamed and his hair turned white the village people um thought it was like cursed or something so they put the stone back and they all ran away and forgot about it a few hundred years later they are building the church building and uh, a young kid that was putting the blocks on, he found the hole, okay, 
and he thought there was treasure in there. So as they're building the building, he made a secret passage to get into that hole to get to the treasure. And he went down and he never returned. Okay, so we don't know who the oldest is or what's going on, um, but there's some old dead person way down deep in the hill. So a few days later, Scarlet comes back and she's a little upset with Bod. And even though Bod's like, hey, come over here, disappears, goes to another grave. Hey, come on, disappears, goes to another one. Psst, 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 come on, come on. Finally, Scarlet can't ignore him. And she says, hey, mom, I'm going to go play on the hill and she goes and takes off and they both start saying like oh, I learned things I learned things too what did you learn I learned there were people older than Romans here and they lived in these huge um, graves that that is actually this hill and Bod is like oh um, I kind of learned the same thing but we can go visit him if you want she's like what right now and so they go make their way into the chapel and Bod has a key and they find the secret passage and they go down and it's really dark Bod can see in the dark, and he has some protections from the graveyard. Um, people can't see him very easily. He can see in the dark. He can go on the paths that normal living people can't go. And I think there's some other things in there. Um, but he has all these freedoms of the graveyard, and the graveyard is protecting him. So he can see in the dark, and he's like, oh, well, I can go down there and look, and um, then come back and tell you if there's anything there. She's like, well, hold my hand, and then I can go. So they go down deep into the dark and then suddenly there's this really freaky tattooy painted guy saying leave this place and Scarlet goes oh my goodness what's going on and Bod is like whoa who are you Scarlet's freaking out but and Bod is a little scared too but he remains calm and he starts talking to this indigo man and he says I have the freedom of the graveyard but the indigo man doesn't care and so as uh, Bod and Scarlet are talking, um, the indigo man goes, Whoa! And Scarlet's like, ah, Bod, make him go away. He's so scary. He's going to kill us. Make him go away. And Bod says, um, no, actually, uh, I, I, don't, I don't think he's real. I think he's imaginary. And Scarlet says, oh, oh, I, I think you're right. I think he is just imaginary. He's a... Uh, scarecrow and a scarecrow is a like shirt on some wood with a hat that's uh, used to make birds um, fly away from the farm so they don't eat the seeds and then Bod says okay hey I know you're I know you're just pretend I know you're imaginary um, stop it We're, who's really here and then the um, indigo man disappears and then uh, Sleer starts to whisper we are the Slayer. And this time, only Bod can really hear it. And he gets goosebumps on the back of his neck. And Scarlet can hear something webby, but she can't hear the words. And then they learn that the Slayer is there to wait for the Master and protect the Master's treasures. And eventually, they decide to leave. Now, when they go back up, I don't know how long it's been, but... Um, Scarlet's parents have been freaking out. They've been looking for her, running all over. They've called the police. Police are there. They've been hunting around, trying to find Scarlet. And when they find Scarlet, they say, Oh, Scarlet, what happened to you? Was there some strange person trying to kidnap you or do some weird things to you? What happened, Scarlet? And she's like, Well, the, my buddy Nobody and I went down this secret passage and we saw this scary tattooy guy. And she tries to tell them everything um the best way she can and they of course they don't believe her and then her parents get mad and they take her off and the parents are crying and she's crying and silas is like whoa bod what happened it's like oh we took i took her to go see the oldest person living here he just lives in this cave and Silas is like wow that's crazy and um bod says it wasn't her fault she shouldn't be in trouble do you think i'll ever see her again and Silas is like, oh, man, honestly, Bod, probably not. And so Bod feels bad about that. But he actually does get to see her one more time. She comes up just to say goodbye to Bod. She says, oh, Bod, my parents are leaving. We're moving to another area. My dad got a job. Um, so I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. But you know what? I, 
You are the bravest person in the world. I don't care if you're imaginary. You're my friend. And then she has to run off and go. And that is goodbye to Bod's first friend. That leaves us with some vocabulary. The first one we got here is sober. Now, sober means um, like clear-headed. I like to compare it to um, imagine if I'm drinking, okay, if I drink too much beer or wine or something, ooh, my mind gets cloudy, okay, that's drunk. Sober is the opposite of drunk, clear, bright, straight. Um, imagine uh, right after you just go uh, doing some exercise or something, your mind is clear. And so Bod, Bod had sober eyes clear, straight, um, focused eyes. Contradictory. Contradictory is uh, saying the opposite thing. Uh, I like pizza. I don't like pizza. Or, no, you don't. Or, hey, don't you like to eat ice cream? No, I don't like ice cream. Okay, always saying the opposite or negative thing to what you say. Um, oftentimes, when kids are like two or three years old, they go into this no phase where they become contradictory. They always want to say no to anything. Do you want to eat your peas? No. Do you want to play outside? No. Do you want to eat ice cream? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is contradictory. Always saying no or the negative thing to something. Lucidly. Lucid is clear. Um, it's a kind of very similar to sober, but as... Bod asked questions to people in the graveyard. They'd give him confusing answers. But Silas would always give him sober, lucid, clear answers. Abode is to live, home, stay. Um, and so Silas has the freedom of the graveyard, but he doesn't have the powers of the graveyard. He just has the right to live there, of abode, of living, of sleeping. Initial is beginning or start. Um, ulation is like a howl, but it's kind of a woo howl. So it's going up and down. So like, right? I'm not going to do it too loud. But this howling into the air that's kind of going up and down. And that is what the indigo man does. Uh, discussion question. What is the most mischief you have gotten into with a friend. Mischief is like harmless trouble. And of course, please make your own discussion question. That is all the time that we have for today. But thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Book Club Preview. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.